Last week, Mojang made some pretty controversial changes to the Copper Bulb and Crafter to bring them into alignment with other Redstone features. This is something which during the week we were expecting them to officially revert or explain, but despite a full pre-release coming out in that time, we have neither, which raises the question, when are you meant to criticize snapshots and try to improve them? And also it raises this interesting piece of insight from a Swedish game developer about exactly why it is that Mojang has such a hard time doing big new things like this and why they are always playing it safe even on big features like the copper bulb which I think we should just start with right now. There has been a lot of vocal hate towards Mojang this week which I won't be airing but instead there is a larger consensus of people like Timotius saying that yeah the crafter change isn't that bad as long as the copper bulb would have remained the same. The problem is they changed that for no reason. So the changes if you're curious is they made both of these blocks move from taking one tick to actually activate into two ticks like everything else and like how it is on bedrock and this is something that they do actually give a reason for for the crafter is to make it more consistent with other blocks that drop or reject items which makes sense if you were going to have things drop or dispense into your crafter you'd want that to time up with when your crafter is happening however the copper bowl being more similar to other blocks that react or change state when connected to redstone signals doesn't actually make a lot of sense because having differences in how blocks interact and change state is actually the desired path unlike things which are dispensing and usually take place as part of a big chain you actually want to have different redstone outputs based on how things work. The reason that over 200 people agree with Timotius is because of the fact that the copper bulb is specifically in the game to be different to other pieces of redstone. It holds a charge unlike everything else and so why would it be so crazy if it took one tick instead of two? This is to me the point that Mojang needs to directly respond to. Are they just doing this because they have some great game design reason or is it more likely that they had some external force, something to do with parity, something to do with other issues in the game? It would be great if they could have a conversation with us about that rather than saying actually yeah this is way better game design when every single redstone out there is saying precisely the opposite. Indeed some people would say it's a mockery of democracy when they put on a token democratic mob vote but we have 100% of players who want the one tick delay on copper bulbs and 0% who want no delay and yet we get the latter. So 7 ow 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 it's worth mentioning that one you've got a very strange username there but two also it's important to note that not 100% of people agree with you this is you doing something called confirmation bias, only looking at people who share the same opinion, but it is worth saying, yeah, the majority of people who are informed about Redstone, enough to have an opinion, probably would say that it's better to have a one tick delay than two, raising the clear question, why is Mojang not listening to the majority? And it's because game design isn't a democracy. The point isn't just to give the most vocal minority and the most vocal set of people their thing first, the point is to try and balance lots of different things, and as long as they're not trying to balance for something like, say, parity more than everything else, I think it is valid of Mojang to do this, but I also think it's important for them to communicate when they do something that people don't like. However, at the same time, let's be honest, it's important that as a community, it's up to you to adjust your expectations to be tiny so you won't be whiny. I mean, even if they change the copper bulb, it's not ruined. It's still a useful compressed flip-flop, as Zachary Lund 5451 says, and hundreds of people agree. And indeed, if you really want to, and Lund White says that you can just have modders fix the change back to the first bulb, you can always mod the game if you want it the way that you want it to be. However, Mojang are trying to design for the majority. Speaking of that, by the way, I have to address this at least once because a lot of people are accusing me of not knowing that the copper bulb is for 1.21, not 1.20.3, even uh, a person actively accusing me of doing this to feign outrage. And so I figured I would use this opportunity to mention that Java has basically moved to the bedrock system of update names where they are, you know, right now bedrock is working on 1.20.60 betas, i.e. a sub update for 1.20. 20, and then eventually some of those features can release as 1.21. Java is doing exactly the same and so there have been no 1.21 snapshots. All of the features which you might expect to be in 1.21 are actually a part of a data pack that you play in 1.20.3 in the snapshot versions. Things get confusing very quickly and ultimately this is something that is good for the game because it means they make more sub updates but also it leads to people being quite confused because there are four separate versions of the game because there's production, non-production, and data pack, non-data pack. However, it seems to work for Mojang, and I need to say this right now because I do get accused of disinformation sometimes, something which I am always trying to work on. I want to make sure I'm giving the most accurate information. I would like to add to the sum of human information and to inform more people, but it's crazy that sometimes it is disinformation that is just, oh, people don't understand themselves, something which I encourage you to improve on, perhaps by watching, like, 
Cat videos. By the way, speaking of uh, watching Toy Cat videos, uh, this next comment is from Seek Symphony 7456. Just realized we're poison arrow skeletons now and also cave spiders in the trial chambers. It gives a unique opportunity to take honey bottles with you into the trial chambers. Essentially, it's a stackable milk bucket, but poison specifically, adding another reason for your honeybee farm in 1.21 Toy Cat. And yes, this is the most important update we've had in a while for you to have a honeybee farm. And so I, I, I just think it's incredibly fun personally that there's a good reason to do that. And so know that if just like me, you have too many bees, you can use them to make these and that will help you in 1.21. Another extra reason. Thank you, Sync Symphony. You know what? Honestly, sometimes I get a lot of comments that really try to drag me down in a week, but it's nice when some people are just like, hey, here's a fun little bonus. And actually a large number of people agree with that. Speaking of a large number of people agreeing, here is one of the top posts from the Minecraft meme subreddit this week. And it is a Swedish game developer who is friends with some Minecraft devs explaining exactly what happens. They say that Minecraft development is funny. As a Swede, I know quite a few devs at Mojang and apparently they are super bogged down by bureaucracy. Microsoft is actually kind of clever and knows Notch and Jens captured lightning in a bottle with Minecraft and they are terrified of potentially cracking that bottle. They are afraid of doing anything to the core gameplay loop and even more terrified of making the game bloated. It pays all right and apparently it is a lovely work environment, but it is apparently just very hard to get permission to add anything. That is why their April Fool's events are usually good because they can work on them more freely. And this is something that makes sense. A lot of people really start to agree with this. People even say we have answers, but please let's just take a step back. This is a screenshot of a YouTube comment that is made by someone who anonymously just says he knows quite a few devs at Mojang without even clarifying the number of people that he does know. So bear in mind the levels of skepticism you should be viewing this with. First is that this is just a random comment from YouTube. Anyone can claim anything in a YouTube comment. It's not a valid source just because you screenshot it and post it on Reddit. Nonetheless, the Minecraft memes subreddit. Uh, second is the fact that even if this person is a Swede, who, which is the only claim that he has, and that he knows quite a few developers of Minecraft, they might not all be the actual people who work on the features, who know things. Hey, they might have heard rumors themselves. He's hearing rumors. There's so many layers to this that who knows if it's accurate. And then the third level off this is even if you assume that it's all true, it could just be that actually this isn't the actual reason for it. There are dumb rumors at every single company, and I'm sure you know the ones at yours. And so Mojang might have the same. I have spoken to some Mojang employees, and they have all sorts of weird gripes of management, some of which I bet are true, and some of which I bet are just uh, person to person rumors. And so I think the reason this post is so interesting is not because it's guaranteed true, but instead because they raise a point that could be true, even if it's entirely made up. And that is the idea that Microsoft is not trying to mess with the Minecraft formula too much. Something that seems absurd from the outside, like surely you have the biggest game of all time. This is where all of your resources should be going. But instead, they might be terrified of making the game feel bloated to the point that people don't recognize it as the Minecraft they used to love anymore and ruining some of that brand value, which they spent so much on obtaining. And uh, in case, you know, you are one of the people like me who really loves to see new updates and loves to see the direction Minecraft is going in right now, it's important to say that for every comment uh, saying that they're excited for 1.21, they can't play the game right now because it's boring. There are comments saying, I just don't care for modern Minecraft, too many unnecessary features, too much Microsoft. Uh, still upset seeing Amethyst Geodes knowing they're absolutely useless. Modern Minecraft is weird. I think it looks cool, but why is Mojang so obsessed with modernizing everything? It doesn't feel like the Minecraft I played with my friends when I was young. There are, you know, for every number of people who want to see new exciting things in Minecraft, there's someone who just wants to play Minecraft from 2012 and yet still feel like it's had some updates since then. A very hard line to strike if you're working on the team. This is something that does have some real truth to it. No matter what the source is, Microsoft could take a huge leap into Minecraft 2. They could do the same by updating the entire end dimension to make a much more satisfying end to the game. But these are things which would hugely alter the progression and make someone coming back into the game go, oh yeah, this isn't what I was used to. This is strange. Maybe they don't like it anymore. They have this beautiful thing which has captured the imagination of so many and they need to make sure that any change they make isn't ruining that. And that kind of is one of the tricky things about basically everything in this. Speaking of one of the tricky things, one of the comments I found this week was from Marcus King 2504 who has been subscribed to me for six years. Something fun fact, if you keep your subscriptions public, a YouTuber can see it. And I think that's crazy. First of all, thank you for being subscribed so long. But second of all, they say it's sad to see how none of the Xbox players get to see any of the new changes. And it's true. If you're playing on the Xbox One, you're still playing a pre-aquatic update version of Minecraft. It is crazy to imagine that lots of people are playing back there, 
but this is something that there are stats to say is true. Many people are happy playing Minecraft, even when it's pre 1.12 Minecraft, because like I've said dozens of times over the years, Minecraft is one of the few games that you could play every single day for a hundred years, the rest of your life, and genuinely not get bored of. By the way, speaking of Minecraft uh, not being creative and having great ideas, one of the interesting ones that proves this to me is this comment from Azel C. They should add a boss from Minecraft Dungeons to that room. The Trial Chambers gives us a Gale Samton vibe, so the Tempest Golem could fit well, and it's true. Imagine having a brand new boss in the game. You don't have to if you played Minecraft Dungeons. They made so many fun bosses for that game. They have imagination, they have creativity, and with even a smaller fraction of the team, they can make so many new things, but they're worried about what should and what can come to the end of the game, something which I'm sure you will agree with at some point if you've been confused by a Minecraft mechanic. It's similar to how, no matter how many redesigns YouTube goes through, they'll never rename the subscribe button, even though subscribe has kind of weakened and you can kind of get part of a subscription without ever subscribing to a channel, but also even though now if you subscribe, you're not guaranteed to see every video like you used to be. Nowadays, that's kind of putting the subscribe and bell at the same time. Uh, it's something which is always changing, but you need to keep those core underlying mechanics. And uh, yeah, if you are a subscriber, you might be like Gauber, Glauser 956 and say, fun fact, I thought Toy Cat skin was a baguette, which is interesting that they say that because it is actually a baguette. If you look closely, you'll notice it is a baguette with a weird tail and there's some green eyes and there's a mouth on it. Uh, but I am in fact just a very ripe baguette, which you can eat anytime you like. That is a sentence I didn't think I'd ever say on YouTube. And so let's distract by going back to the copper bulb thing because there is an important last message here. And it's although, uh, you know, Minecraft is trying to keep the game as simple as possible, adding to it, but without destroying anything they have already. Um, an important point from Piglin is something I'd like to push back on because they say that people forget that this is snapshots and things aren't final and the devs will change their minds on something. So there is zero reason to complain at all. And it seems like a good point at first until you realize that no, actually, the snapshots are the time to complain. Don't wait for the finished update to come out and then complain because Minecraft will say many times, this was in beta, you should have said something about it then. This is the time to specifically give feedback. Make sure it's constructive. Don't harass any developers directly. Please get it uh, straight to a feedback source or to Minecraft. Or if you're going to have to say to a developer, say as constructively as you can so they want to engage with the community. Uh, but this is the time to complain. Don't wait for the update to come out. That will be too late. That is, <laughs> if you're not going to complain now, now, you cannot complain ever. A valid strategy too. Um, but yeah, that is something that is important to say. Uh, because as uh, you know, this next person here says, no 19N, I might have missed this. Does anyone know about the villager changes? People pushed back on the villager changes heavily and they realized that, oh, these are not very popular. We won't roll them into 1.21 or 1.20.1. And so right now they're sitting in a state of limbo until Mojang can find a better balance of the community. The same is true for the combat changes. They're waiting to bring a better, well, I mean, it's been three years, but they're waiting for a better state of equilibrium. And this is something which I believe they want to do. And this is something that we should be hopefully pushing them in the right direction on. Make clear what it is that you do like and don't like. Don't say you just don't like this. Try to work with people on a solution and you'll never know. You might just find one. Speaking of maybe find a solution, this is the end of this video. I hope you've all enjoyed it. I uh, am about to go and visit a grave for the first time in my life. So, you know, wish me luck on that. I'm going to going to pour something out there. Is that a bad idea? Don't. If, if it is illegal, then I'm totally not going to do that. And uh, yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, actually, wait, no, not fun. It's going to be the opposite of that. It's going to be going to be a tragic, terrible, uh, more seriously, it's going to be uh, a real situation for me, but I'm going to do it. And uh, thank you to everyone who's been offering me support this last week. It was a big thing to go to a, a funeral and have the, the moment where everything was real. Uh, you know, watching something be lowered into the ground is something I I thought was a movie situation, but I see why it is a movie situation. It's something that feels so real as it's happening. But uh, yeah, I, I want to say uh, thank you to everyone for the support, and I hope that you enjoyed this one. And if you didn't like it, just don't don't send me hatred, uh, and uh, you know, send it to I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I was gonna say King B Dogs, but I, I, I like King B Dogs. Don't be mean to him. He's one of the best liaisons we have in the community. Instead, uh, I don't know. Uh, write it in a letter and then mail the letter to yourself. But in five years. For now, thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye.